All right, in this video, we're gonna talk about how to apply color and get some masks off of this geometry. Uh, but first I wanna fix this little weird triangle thing here, kind of poking up. And the way I wanna do that is I'm going to force it to stay on this node by tapping the F key. And if you right click, you can see we're, we're gonna lock the preview. There's our F key. And then I'm gonna swing all the way back over here to mountainside, which is where that's coming from. And I'm just gonna change the seed to something else. It's gonna go ahead and have to reprocess everything. Try it, everyone. There we go, that looks okay. All right, and the next thing I wanna do is I'm going to turn off the lock by tapping the F key again, and I'm gonna add a clip. So what clip is gonna do is it's gonna give me the ability to put a nice clean boundary here at the bottom. So if I just bump this up a little bit, you can see what that result is, and I just kind of want to get it so that I have a clean boundary all the way across the front here, which would make this just a little bit easier to deal with as an asset, which is, I think, where we're going to end up with this thing. Okay, so that's that's looking fine. All right, so this is going to be basically my geometry. So the first thing I want to do is I'm going to pull off of this and I'm going to type in the word measure. So the way this works is I can set the format of the geometry. I have OBJ, FBX, and ABC, and um, I have not been able to get FBX to work and I didn't try uh, ABC, but OBJ does work. What the scale means is if this is normalized, it's gonna have this as zero and this as one as a single unit. So it's gonna be very, very small, basically like a meter tall. Um, and then if you set this to meters, it's gonna be, I think, Oh, I don't know, bigger, right? Big enough that we can take a look at it and it's meaningful. So we'll just stick it to meter. If it's kilometer and this is 1K, then this is gonna be a pretty big a pretty big asset. The next thing down here is gonna be these vertices per side. And you can see at this current resolution, we'll be generating a piece of geometry with approximately 8 million faces, which is probably a little bit heavy, even using Nanite, but it will be fine as a high poly. So I'm gonna rename this. We'll call this one wall demo high. And we'll use that to do our bakes with in Painter. And then I'm gonna pull off of this and type in measure once again. I'll leave everything the same. I'm gonna rename this to wall demo low and set this down here to 256. And that'll give us a piece of geometry with approximately 130,000 faces, which will work very nicely with Nanite. Now we need to uh, right click on both of these and click mark for export and mark for export. And they will take the, uh, if we go over to build, you can now see that we have these, these two nodes added and it looks like I need to fix my capitalization there just to keep it consistent. All right, so that'll be our geometry. The next thing you want to do is create some color. So I'm going to pull off and type in sat map. And what sat map is going to do, let's go and find one with a little bit of a clear gradient on it. Pick this one. Might be a little bit hard to see with our current lighting arrangement. There we go. So what's going on here is the values that are close to zero are going to be using colors on this side. And as we go further to the top here to one, we're gonna be using this side. So if I just kind of click through on a few of these, you can see how that is being applied. It's very, very linear and procedural, and we don't like that. We wanna mix it up a little bit. So I'm actually going to add a new node here called texture base. And if we look at the output of texture base, it's gonna give us something that's a texture that is informed by what's going on with the geometry. And it's got some options here we can play with, turn on the flows, play with the soil, make it a little more patchy, whatever, right? So, but we're still not really getting a full range from black to white, which is what we want so that we get everything out of our sat map. So I'm gonna pull out of texture base, and we're gonna add an adjust. Now with adjust, this is gonna look a little bit like levels in, in Photoshop. With it selected, if I turn on equalize, you can see now we're getting a full range of black to white values. And this is what we're actually gonna to wanna to pump into our sat map. And you can see the result there is very, very dramatic, perhaps true dramatic. So you can also come over here and maybe 
play with some of these values to get a little bit of a different result, right? Okay, and also there are many, many, many options here to choose from, which may work better, right? Maybe not something quite that noisy or that stripey, whatever. This is probably okay. So in addition to texture base, we can look at the uh, derived section, which is where this texture base comes from, and generative. So I'm going to just throw a few more of these down. And these are very useful if you want to add some extra masks in Unreal or uh, Substance Painter or whatever. So that's the flow. Go back to derive. We'll grab generative. We'll do occlusion. And we can bump these up a little bit. And then in derive once again, we'll grab a rock map. So if I zoom in a little bit, you can kind of get a sense for, for what that looks like. We're also still at 1K, which is pretty low res. We may bump this up a little bit higher just to get a sense for what that stuff looks like uh, in a moment. But for now, let's just combine these just to kind of show what that looks like. It's going to be basically the same thing. So this is the occlusion, this is the rock map, and this is the two of them together. And if we set this to something like multiply, you can get a you know an idea of what's happening there. And then also we could always throw an adjust on there. And then play with it to punch it around, whatever, right? So this isn't something that necessarily I'm going to use. I just kind of want to show you that it is possible to, to get this kind of mask out of Gaia. We are probably going to use this one, but I'm going to, these, this big patch stuff here is kind of throwing me off. So I'm going to lock the preview, go back to texture base and break some of this stuff up a little bit, or at least try to, I don't necessarily need more flows, play with the chaos a bit. Okay. I'm going to uh, unlock the preview, go ahead and select this. So that's, that's fine, whatever. Right. And then we've also got these over here so we can pump this into a stat map. And we'll go to rock. And just for fun, let's just combine these and see what happens. Maybe a little bit noisy with all that stuff, but yeah, whatever. It's okay. It's totally fine for a demo. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and right click on this and we are going to mark this for export. You can see there's our, our combine. I'm gonna rename this so that it makes sense. You can call this one color. And I actually wanna export this texture base as well. Actually, I wanna do the adjusted texture base. So I'm just gonna pull off of this and we'll just add an export. We'll go ahead and mark that for export. And I'm going to call this one mask. All right. So you can see here what we're exporting. We've got our, our color. I thought I renamed. I'm going to set this to a PNG eight and our mask can also be PNG eight. And these are set to EXR, which is like a 32 bit image format. The geometry that we're looking for, an OBJ or an FBX something doesn't exist. So if you just leave it at EXR, that will be sufficient. So we're going to be exporting a high, a low, our mask, which we'll potentially use in, in uh, Unreal, and then the color. So we'll go ahead and get all these exported in the next video.